So, so, but though to Keith's point, then why do we have to have in here that we vote? I mean, if you, I think first what you're saying is today they handle it today. Yeah, so uh, and we actually, just remove that that mm -hmm. the EUB can maintain their own schedule. I mean, sure. They will determine a date, and then there's no reason that I don't think that it has to come to council to change the meeting. Uh, vote on it. And I didn't pick that out of thin air. I understood that was direction. From the work session. Oh. So. No, I, and like, it, it, it's really not criticism. It's trying to make sure that what we come out of it, it, is going to operate right. the best way, and that's just take Pretty extra time to accomplish anything when probably not necessary. You can amend it from the day if you want to, or I can bring something back however you want. No. If, if there's consensus. Well, and honestly, there again, if it's something that we can stipulate uh, so that we don't have this come back and come back and come back. Uh, can you have more? I do. Um, in Section 3, in Item A, uh, it talks about essentially some of these things just seem to be day to day operations, and I'm not sure why we have to vote on or have it come through to sell the electric utilities products and services to public and private corporations and to other consumers. That's, that's the core function of the business. I don't understand what. What's the purpose of having us vote on that, on just item number one of that, of section letter A? Wait, I'm sorry, where are you? Sure. Section three, item A, okay. and just the first of the line topics. Mm -hmm. okay. To sell the, the electric utilities products and services. That just seems like their core function. And this is, isn't that what they're built to do? So what would they bring to us that we would have to, and Cheryl, you may have some better insight. What would they ask of us in that regard? Why does it need to be there? Set, set rates. <coughs> sorry? Set rates. That's so we address rates in a different well, but selling the electric utilities products and services that's that's what they're that doing ties back into rate setting perfect um, then item number five it talks about entering all contract leases and agreements and further and sale. I don't know what about items that may fall into the purchasing policy uh, emergency situation that calls for the leasing of a caterpillar or a backhoe or something like that that's a short term lease, but under the terms that have to come for approval for the council or <coughs> Would the city administrator be able to sign off on that? Uh, I'm just wondering if that's going to get in the way of emergency maintenance and some of these items, because when you speak with Bill, Bill's had to do some of those short-term lease type items to address some of these concerns. Does it have to come to us on a short-term lease to have it done? No, it does not. Uh, and why not? Emergency. If well, it's emergency. It's I, I know we've talked about the emergency plan. Can we, I guess, take a break and just describe that? Because we say, no, they don't have to, but I've not seen exactly how that works in the case of emergency. What, be, what would be the process to avoid having to come for us to and grant so in essence would we who would have the authority to do that right now yes. if there is an emergency no. well that with, with a certain um, threshold dollar amount of purchase that would be for something that's not an emergency if there is an emergency that we have here at the city we would not be waiting to come to council for a meeting to authorize keeping operations in an emergency case the purchasing policy already allows for an emergency purchase does it to be done okay yes. i mean that's one of the concerns i just don't know how it's written because this talks about every single thing has to be vetted by the city council because that's the only person that can grant that authority no because if we have a <coughs> major snowstorm or we have some kind of other disaster where we need to spend more than a certain amount to be able to operate we would not have a council meeting we would exercise the authority in the purchasing policy so we'd be able to still do that, we even though it's drafted in this area, because it's never been written this concrete, I don't think, anywhere before. So would we be in violation of this ordinance by having an emergency plan that entered into a new agreement to address it? Mm -hmm. That was my concern as I read it. Mm -hmm. So if you look at item five, does that eliminate the emergency plan? I, I'm sorry, where are you at? at item Section three. Okay. Item A, three. and then line item number five. I'm not sure what the subtopic number five is. Yes. Yeah, but the the purchasing policy, and I, I, I've actually seen this chapter and verse. Uh, I I don't have it in front of me, uh, but uh, I I do know that it it addresses being able to do that. I don't know if okay, Laura. Yeah, it's the. I'm sorry. Well, I want to make sure we would be able to do I, that. That that was I, because it's it's pretty stringent wording that's not been in anything that I've read before. So I want to make sure we still have those. And bills. If, if and you I, look at, I'm sorry, Councilman. If you look at Section 3E, okay. the um, city's purchasing policy is <coughs> adopted and, and incorporated by reference. Okay. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, 
and I know that there's a there's a, a, a very uh, well used uh, anecdote about the purchasing policy. Uh, apparently, a previous city administrator uh, didn't want to give uh, authorization for what was uh, deemed by the uh, electric director as a, an emergency purchase, so that it would have to go to council. Um, as it's turned, I, the way I understand it, it was the city administrator's <coughs> decision to take it to council, not a requirement that he take it to council, uh, and especially given what we know about the, the emergency uh, uh, opportunities in, in the city uh, purchasing policy. And I, I don't know if anybody's got that. Laura, do you have that? Can you read that, please? Section 5 exceptions. It is recognized that emergency situations occasionally arise in city operations. In the event of an emergency, it is up to the judgment of the highest authority personnel on hand to make a responsible decision regarding obtaining required goods and or services. All supervisors of the city are charged with the responsibility to determine if an emergency situation exists and to make necessary decisions if higher authority is unavailable. Any purchases made outside of the normal purchasing procedure must be reported as soon as reasonably possible to the accounting manager in the finance department. A requisition still must be entered through the purchasing software system for documentation of proper approval. I think that I just didn't have a copy of that, so I'm thankful that you're able to pull it up, Lord. And that and the way the other one reads because it doesn't trump that in any way, correct? The way the proposed the okay. Uh, Laura, in 2010, wasn't there a an emergency at the an emergency purchase that was required at the at the wastewater treatment plant. I believe it was in regards to a grinder that exceeded the. I was going to say I don't remember anything specific, but you're talking three years ago. So yeah, I, I believe there was. We've had emergencies, and it doesn't even specifically rest with the city administrator. It says highest authority personnel on hand. Sure, right. You better be able to be accountable for it later, but it's not. It's not. Restricted merely to the city administrator. Laura, is that the record? Scott, do you remember that? It's yeah. highest authority yeah. on hand. Yeah, you remember your account. How much? Oh, it was just under 60. Okay. Oh. Very good. Thanks. Perfect. That, that Thank was the concern. Thank you for uh, being here again. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry to bring you in the house. Yeah. Um, let's see, the other question I had was uh, Section 4. Item B, uh, just the last sense of that. I, I just don't know how that's going to be enforced, and, and if we know of any specific instance that may affect, actually, which talks about the provision shall not apply to any contracts and obligations which exceeded the board's authority. Well, I, you know, I've got that in there, but it, actually under Kansas, I wouldn't even need to include that. To the extent that a public official enters into a contract that exceeds their authority, by Kansas law, it is void, as in it was deemed to have never been entered into. So I've got that in there, but under Kansas law, it's, it's probably not even necessary. Correct. Um, on the next one, section C, I just, the first line of this, to the extent that the board under ordinance 2296 purported to establish any personnel policies and pay scales for employees outside of that. Um, I, I wonder if we could just omit that line because it really doesn't serve to the future legislation. It, it, it talks about what can be done with the personnel at that point, but there's just kind of what's happened. I don't know why it needs to be in there. The reason I, I included that, but the, the way I saw this ordinance was twofold. Um, one was to kind of repudiate some situations that I saw that I saw legal concerns with, and to make it clear to everyone dealing with the Gardner EUB going into the future exactly what the scope of their authority was going to be compared to what their scope of their authority had been in the past. Um, so that's that was one purpose and that's one of the reasons, that's the reason why I included that particular provision. The second purpose obviously was to establish a framework for the EUB going forward. Okay. So that's that's why it's there, but you know, it's it's your it's your all's ordinance and right. um, I <clears throat> take direction well so if you want that struck I can do that. I, I don't see any any 
constructive reason why that first sentence should be there. We can start at sentence two, which is any and all employees performing work related to the city's electric utility or employees of the city's and septic for the city's personnel policies and pay scales. That 